course. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Uh, this video is going to focus on using the count ifs function in Excel and we have previously touched on this in a video where we did an introduction to counting in general so we looked at count, count if and count ifs, uh, the one with the multiple criteria. So if you haven't seen that uh, or you want a fresher on that video, uh, the link to that uh, tutorial of ours should be on the screen now or very shortly so go check it out or if you want to refresh it at the end of this video obviously go check it out just to um, refresh your mind on how it uses it, how it works in this video we're going to be using that function to show um, obviously one of the scenarios that we can use it for and that is going to be uh, being able to count uh, the number of values that fall within uh, a defined uh, day range so by that we mean in columns F to H, uh, this is the information we're going to be using to um, populate and then return our result into H. And we've currently got this set to the 10th to the 25th of April. Uh, what is fine actually, we can, we can still go with that. So we can see that uh, we're only interested in counting uh, the number of results. And sorry, let me step back because I haven't explained the table on the left here. So what we've got in B and C is we can see we've got uh, a number of names. So we've got seven in total and we've got a submission date by each of those names. So again, another seven to coincide with those names. And we'll treat this that um, these individuals had to re return either a piece of work or something, um, maybe even like uh, some course training that they had to have done in this uh, by this particular time. And we've captured obviously the date that they submitted that piece of work. What we're then interested to do is we want to know how many uh, were submitted or had a date submitted date. Uh, between the 10th of April and the 25th of April. And that's where the count ifs function comes in because that will allow us to utilize the multiple criteria and to count only those values that fall within our defined criteria. So to jump straight in, we can start populating our result. So as mentioned many times now, we're going to be using the count ifs function. So we go equals and count ifs. And as from the prompt, just to give that once, uh, just to reference it, we can see it counts the number of cells specific by a given set of conditions or criteria. And that's obviously the purpose of using this function. So once we've typed in count this, we can open our brackets and enter our first um, range to apply criteria to. So in both um, arguments we're going to be entering into here, or not both arguments, but both uh, ranges we're going to be utilizing the same column C, what has the date submitted. So the first thing we want to do is we want to identify our starting point. So we want to make sure that we only want to do everything that is greater than or equal to our start date in column F, that is the 10th of April. So in order to do that, we select our range that contains all of our uh, dates. Uh, so column C in our example here. And then once we've done that, we can hit the comma and we can move into criteria one, which is the uh, criteria we wish to apply to criteria range number one. So that criteria is going to be using our um, logical symbols and we're going to be using the greater than and the less than and the equal symbols in this example. What we need to do is when we enter our symbols, we're going to put them into a quotations. Uh, so in order to do that, you can just hold down the shift button on your keyboard and then the number two, which should give you this quotation as you see on the screen. Once we've done that, we can then firstly enter our greater than symbol. And uh, so this is the one where it's like bigger on the left and then smaller on the right. And then you can, uh, this sort of helps remind, remember it in the way that greater than, so obviously you go from left to right. So the greater needs to be on the left and then the than would be the smaller on the right. Once we've done that, we can then do our equal symbol, um, as you see there. And then lastly, we'll do a, one more quotation uh, to uh, surround those two symbols. Once we've done that, we can then do an, equal, uh, an and symbol, sorry. So it's kind of saying we want it to be greater than, equal to, and then the start date we want to select. So having done that, we can then select our start date here. And then enter comma, and then we move on to the second piece of criteria. So this first bit we've got here, you can see is the information that we need to understand or identify everything that is the 10th of April and above, as currently put into our start date in column F. What we could do is we could type our start date uh, as a static value into it rather than putting F3, but we're gonna one reference um, 
the value in F3 because it just enables it to be more dynamic. So if you want to change our date range, we can. And, and we'll show that example as we get to it. So that's the first part. The second part is exactly the same in its principle, uh, obviously just going to be slightly different. So the criteria range 2 is going to be the same as criteria range 1, so column C, do our comma, and this time it's going to be following the same suit, uh, so we're going to have to enter our quotation, but this time we're going to do less than, so we do the less than symbol here, uh, so the smaller on the left and the greater on the right. We'll then also do our equal symbol, quotation, last symbol being the and symbol, and then we can select our end date here, the 25th of April, which is in column or in cell reference G3. And I'll just close the brackets off there. So what we can see is the first part is we want to look in column C, and we, only, we want to identify only um, everything what is greater than or equal to the 10th of April 19, which is our start date. So as you'll see here in our example, it's going to exclude those values in row 3 and 4 of column C because the 31st of March and the 1st of April are obviously less than. So it's going to exclude those, and obviously it's then going to focus on row 5 and everything thereafter. The second part here, so from column C, is then going to say, okay, exclude anything what is not uh, less than or equal to our current example, the 25th of April. So what it will do is it's now going to exclude these in row 8 and 9, so we've got the 30th of April and the 1st of May being excluded. That leaves us these rows 5 to 7, so the 10th, the 20th and the 25th of April that meet our criteria. So upon entering, hitting enter here, our result in column H should give us the value of 3. And that's exactly what it's done. So we can see that, as we, we kind of just stepped through already actually, but so we've got the 10th, 20th and 25th are the only ones that meet that criteria we have. If we were to change our criteria uh, ever so slightly and let's say this, we want the 24th of April to be our last date and we want the 11th of April to be our starting date, we can see that our result is only now going to be 1 because obviously the only uh, date so, or the only piece of information we have that fits that criteria is this single one here in row 6 for the 20th of April. And the benefit of obviously this being dynamic is we can now change this as much as we want. So if we wanted to look at just the month of April, we could enter the 1st of April and to the 30th of April here and find everything what happened in April. Or alternatively, if we wanted as well, we could enter the full width of our, um, of our data set and enter the 31st of March into there, into our start date. And we could put the 1st of May over here as well so we've got the end as well so you can see that that's why we could do the full breadth and it's worth just mentioning obviously we're not limited to just the dates that are on show to us here we could obviously change this to be the first of the first 2019 until the 31st of the 12th so that we could look at everything what happened in the calendar year here obviously the dates we've got here um, are obviously nowhere near um, January or December, but that's just another way of just making sure that everything was captured in that date range. And just one last time, we'll click into the formula so you can see it there. And it's four parts um, to the function, or four arguments. So we've got obviously the first range and the first piece of criteria to apply to it, what gives us this first section here. And then lastly, we've got the second section, what's made up of another two arguments, which is the range and the criteria to apply to it as well. So we hope you enjoyed that lecture. Um, because I say using count ifs uh, in this in this manner is a real uh, powerful way to start summarizing your data, and it's not limited to just doing it in one summary box here. Obviously, if you had a summary table which you were looking at something a bit more high level, you could use that formula in multiple different rows to populate based on different scenarios or based on different date ranges. So you might have had a month here of the 1st of Jan to the 31st of Jan, so you could count all those in January, and then so on and so forth, with each row being a different month of the year, just to give another example how you can use it. Uh, but we hope you uh, enjoyed that and that gave you another insight into how you can use the count if function. Do stay tuned as we will be doing a very similar example but using the sum function. So rather than counting the values that apply to that, doing a sum of values that fall within that range as well. Uh, so that again is another very good and useful um, tip for using in Excel. So to make sure you don't miss that future video, subscribe to the channel, 
hit the notification button so that you don't miss uh, any when that video is launched onto YouTube. We've also got links to our Facebook and Instagram in the description to this video so you can use them to one follow so again you're also notified of when our videos come out and they're also great mediums for you to ask us any questions you have in addition to dropping a comment below this video. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.